This is KGW News at 11. Thanks for being with us in our top story tonight. Well, it actually doesn't take place until tomorrow at noon. That's when a new police chief is going to be sworn in at the Portland Police Bureau. Mayor Ted Wheeler has appointed Jamie Resch to the position of top cop. Now she'll succeed Daniel Outlaw, who today was named as the police commissioner in Philadelphia. Let's go to KGW's Mike Benner. A lot happened in the past 24 hours, Mike. Uh, you're at the police bureau tonight. Fill us in. That's right, Dan. Good evening. Daniel Outlaw was always seen as something of an outsider at the Portland Police Bureau. She came from Oakland. She did not have any ties to Portland, but her uh, replacement is definitely uh, an insider. She has spent decades in this city. She has risen up through the ranks of the Bureau. There is certainly some excitement surrounding Jamie Resch. Jamie Resch has been with the Portland Police Bureau since 1999. She has served as a patrol officer and a neighborhood response team officer. In 2008, Resch was promoted to sergeant. Four years later, she was promoted to lieutenant. Four years after that, she became a captain. Most recently, Resch served as assistant chief, and now she's the top cop in the Rose City. She's a community-oriented uh, individual. She understands the value of community. Musay Alol is the vice chair of the Muslim Advisory Council. Yes. He couldn't be any happier that Mayor Ted Wheeler tapped Resch as Portland's next police chief. I mean, she's one of our, you know, she's, she's Portlander, she's uh, Oregonian. I mean, she's, she knows uh, the, the culture in and out uh, and the system and the communities. Resch will succeed Daniel Outlaw, who on Monday afternoon was introduced as the police commissioner in Philadelphia. At an introductory press conference, Outlaw thanked Portland's mayor, residents, and police force before turning her attention to the city of brotherly love. I am convinced that trust can be restored here and all across our nation. I am convinced that community policing or community police relations can be rebuilt and fortified through dialogue, transparency and accountability. And those issues are some of the same issues the ACLU of Oregon is hoping Jamie Resch can tackle in Portland. We are hopeful that, that the future chief um, you know, is going to work to build up a trust in the community. It's, it's through collaboration with the community, accountability and transparency. And again, Jamie Resch will be officially sworn in at noon tomorrow, but we can tell you she is already hard at work. We know that she's appointed a new deputy chief as well as a new assistant chief of operations. Dan, back to you. Things moving quickly. Mike Benner, thank you so much. Uh, it was a quick stay for our now former police chief outlaw leaving Portland just after about two years on the job. Brittany Fockers now takes a look back at the impact that she made here. I'm pleased to present our new police commissioner, Danielle Outlaw. Portland Police Chief Danielle Outlaw is trading in the Rose City Good for the afternoon. city of brotherly love. Outlaw will head the fourth largest municipal department in the country, overseeing a force of 6,400 officers. It's a challenge she's ready to take on after decades of service, first in Oakland, California, and as Portland's police chief in 2017. I am convinced that trust can be restored here and all across our nation. At the announcement made in Philly this afternoon, Outlaw thanked Mayor Ted Wheeler, the people of Portland, and members of the Portland Police Bureau. It was an absolute honor to serve alongside each and every one of them. Portland was in the national spotlight many times during Outlaw's tenure, leading a department no stranger to controversy. She guided officers through several large protests, which included accusations of excessive force by officers. If you hear a dispersal order telling you to leave, then you should leave immediately. After national attention created an impression of standing back while dueling protesters fought, she cracked down. And in August, she and Mayor Wheeler stood beside community members and activists, a coalition calling for peace ahead of planned protests. That, what I, I would say, is my, my, most, my most proud moment uh, in Portland, and that was bridging gaps and bringing people together that otherwise would not have sat at the table before. We talked to Outlaw a year into the job on Straight Talk. She spoke about the difficulty in trying to find the balance in protecting someone's right to free speech and preventing violence. Here we are in the city of Portland, and Unfortunately, the city has become a place known all over the country as the place to come and settle your differences under the cover of First Amendment in the Constitution. Among other notable steps, Outlaw took initiative in advising Mayor Wheeler to break up a protest siege of an ICE center in Portland. And you have to go home and tell your children that this is what you do children. for a living. But we also got to see another side of Chief Outlaw. In November, she took a ride with Brenda Braxton in our KGW Carpool series. 
getting to know the woman out of the uniform. It's kind of cool to see you in a regular clothes. This is me all the time, though. So that's what trips me out. I guess, I don't know, I guess it's because folks uh, associate me with work more than anything else. But it's like, I'm not at work all the time, am I? And Are you think about that, it's like, I thought I might be. She opened up about being the first black woman to serve as Portland's police chief. And the reality is that I had to spend more time showing why or having to prove why I'm qualified or competent instead of just coming into the job and doing my job like other folks that don't look like me get to do all the time. They get the benefit of the doubt. I had never been referred to as a diversity hire in my life until I got here. The notion of outlaw being a diversity hire is something Mayor Wheeler addressed when she was sworn in as Portland's chief on October 2nd, 2017. Not because she was a woman, not because she is black, but because she was the best candidate for the job. She's breaking barriers again in Philadelphia. She'll be the first African-American woman to serve as commissioner there. But I do not take lightly the fact that I am a first here. I understand what I represent. I understand who opened the doors for me uh, to be in this position. And I understand that it's also my obligation to hold the doors open behind me to ensure that we're not in 2020 still talking about firsts. Thank you to Brittany for that, uh, that piece there. Now, if you want to watch the rest of Chief Outlaw's carpool interview with Brenda Braxton, we're just talking about this. I, I think it's a really interesting piece, worth your, t worth your time, especially with what we know now. You can find that all on our YouTube channel. We're going to have more reaction, uh, too, uh, about today's surprise announcement on KGW.com. A young climber who fell on Mount Hood today is now off the mountain and recovering. Thankfully, the 16 year old did hurt his leg after falling about 500 feet, they say, near the summit. Rescuers got him down to Timberline Lodge at about five this evening, but it was a long day. They got him into an ambulance and off to the hospital. They said he is stable, but they did not say how bad his injuries are. The search for a missing 20 year old woman has been suspended. Allison Watterson disappeared just a few days before Christmas. She was last seen with her boyfriend in the woods near North Plains. Allison's mother tells us that the couple was visiting a friend when their car broke down. They got separated while looking for help. Allison's boyfriend has been arrested, but on an outstanding warrant not related to this case. Anyone with information should please contact the Washington County Sheriff's Office tip line. Two people were shot in Old Town early this morning at Northwest Broadway in Flanders. It happened around 4 a.m. Police say one victim is in critical condition and the other has serious injuries. Police have arrested a suspect, but they're hoping to hear from witnesses. Please give them a call if you know anything. The highly anticipated trial for the man accused of stabbing three men on a max train will start next month. Today, lawyers for Jeremy Christian argued about potential evidence in the case. Christian is accused of killing two men and hurting another. In court today, the judge heard two different motions. First, the state wants the jury to actually lay eyes on, see that max train where the incident happened in person. It also wants a recording of Christian making statements a day before the attack admitted as evidence. The judge will likely make a decision on these next Monday. Opening statements in the trial are expected to begin on January 28th. A popular Northwest Portland restaurant served its last meal today after 20 years in business. Byways on Northwest Gleason has been a breakfast and lunch spot for a lot of people. The restaurant owners were not able to work out a lease agreement apparently to keep it going as it has for two decades now. For owners Megan Brinkley and Colin McFadden Irving, closing the restaurant is bittersweet. We're trying to make it fun. We're seeing like so many faces, like just from the, in 20 years, you got a whole bunch of family, you know, which is really great. And uh, we're just trying to make it fun. That's the big part about it. It's, I mean, there's some feelings, but we're, we're holding on. A lot of people have feelings about this place. The owners, they, again, they don't plan to open another restaurant either, but they do say they have plans to make a cookbook, to put one of those out together and keep all the favorite dishes alive.